Well, hello there, Master Hellish Hero. Welcome to our Open TTD Monday Night Live Let's Play. We're here with, of course, we're back with Series 9. And for those of you who I have not seen yet, welcome to 2022. Now, we've done a few streams last week and all that sort of thing, but this is the first Open TTD one back. So there's a few people that may be coming by. Hello, Brandon, Jackamat, Nudge above the line, Martin, Gil Games, and DJ Egg, Lawrence, and everybody else. Everybody else is coming along. I can see there's quite a few of you popping in. Um, just to catch everybody up, hello, welcome. Uh, we're going to be cracking on with Open TTD in a moment. Hope you all had a good festive period and a good start to uh, the new year. Um, myself, I took a two week break. And which was lovely. Some family time, some time to catch up with some stuff, and also a few changes happening. So there's uh, going to be a few changes in my personal life, which will affect Master Hellish a little bit, probably. We'll see. Uh, there's certainly going to be some scheduling changes. So at the moment, if you head out to my website, masterhellish.net, you will see something that looks like this. And uh, if I just readjust the display capture to fit properly, there we go. Uh, because that's something else that's changed recently, that I'm now streaming in slightly different settings, so we might actually get some better quality. Another thing is I'm getting fibre to the house, so we may have better... So it's, there's lots going on. But this is our current schedule as it is, and it, this is probably the last week it will be like this. So we're going to be looking for some changes coming up. But don't worry, Open TTD fans. We'll still be doing Open TTD, and actually it's still going to be on a Monday. It might start half an hour later, but watch out on social media and Discord for announcements of that, and keep have a, a, a good a good like uh, a good eye on it, I should say. Um, so there we go. The the where have slightly different icons to the time they are connected to. The where have slightly different icons. To the time they're connected to yes that is that is true so the daytime streams um have uh suns and the evening streams have moons actually the open ttd stream has moved since then so those those ones need updating but i'm not going to bother to update it because it's all changing next week anyway so basically keep an eye out for that so you don't miss anything but that is that, and that is all, and that is the hellos and welcomes. So let's get Open TTD up and running and get back into the action. Now, I have actually played Open TTD this year. I have started recording the uh, videos, um, which has been great to get back to the Season 6 uh, UK Challenge. That's been great fun. Uh, the challenge that I had, and some of you may have noticed I post that I had tech. I posted that I had technical difficulties, and that was due to... Um, it turned out that there was all the files that I recorded on that day were corrupt in some way, and it was causing the driver errors. So there wasn't a problem with the driver itself, it was the file. And I resolved the issue eventually. It has been resolved by passing the files through a converter. So I've managed to recover the files, and normal videos will commence... Uh, for the year uh, starting this weekend. So don't worry, Open TTD videos are back on track. The next one is on Saturday for now, <laughs> until the schedule changes potentially. Uh, but here we go. Uh, this is uh, this is Open TTD. Is it going to be on the middle of the screen? It is on the middle of the screen. Brilliant. Okay, there we go. So yes, um, Jack the Train Spotter, it is resolved. Hello, Charles, watching there on YouTube. Welcome. Oh, what? You brought a chocolate chip muffin? Oh, I haven't had anything like that in ages. I haven't had anything like that in ages. I, well, I've had some treat food, but not a chocolate chip muffin. Back on track, yes. Back on track. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. Um, bear with me a second. Okay, just checking. Every now and then, when I get a bunch of messages, I like to check just to make sure none of them, none of them are urgent. Uh, I have forgotten to actually fill my drink up for this live stream, so we'll have to take a break at some point so I can grab myself a drink. But for those of you who um, 
are maybe new to this series. This is series nine. It's in the video des description, I believe. Uh, but this series, we're using the Furs Industry Replacement Set version four. And we've got it set to Steel Town, so you can go set parameters, and the economy is Steel Town. And we're using the Industrial Stations Renewal Set, which is fantastic. Yeah. Steel Town isn't an add-on. You have to you just select it in the parameters. So when you install furs, it's temperate basic. Um and then there's Steel Town just there in the options. So it's part of it's part of furs. It's not actually anything extra. Um Yeah, we've we've got uh I no I don't know. We haven't actually named that section. Over here we've got J Bay's Carbon. We've named that bit. And over here, we've got... Um, oh, I can't remember. What, we said Zio, didn't we? This is Zio's... Well, I don't know what it is. Bulk? Zio's Terminal? Yeah, that, that one was naturally generated. We've got Krillo's Coke. And all of these people are viewer plus subscribers. And... Like I said before my break, uh, before Christmas, I said I was going to fix that counter. That counter is now accurate. So it counts the uh, subs correctly. So thank you very much to Real Fella for being a viewer plus subscriber as well as Nudger. And we have 46. So still, I'm still saying if we get to 50 viewer plus subscribers, I will do a £50 Steam voucher giveaway. Oh, and speaking of giveaways, uh, for those of you who won... Steam voucher giveaways and the postcard giveaways over uh, uh, in the festive charity stream and before they are in the process of being sorted out now. Now I'm back from my holiday and I'm back to recording videos, back to creating content. Then um, I'm gonna I'm getting mid I'm in the middle of getting that sorted out. And some of you will have received emails and stuff from me already. Um, you got a question? Are you going to make a series in a hot country set? Already done it. I think it was series three, or was it two? I don't know. Check out the playlists on my YouTube channel. Uh, you can also go to my website, masterhellish.net, and there is a playlist page on there that neatly puts down all the different things in there. Uh, 50, 50 viewer plus subscribers, more blue hair. I will, we'll have to see if I ever do blue hair again. It was, it was an interesting experiment. So let's just take stock of what's going on here. So we are doing various different things around here, and nearly all of it... Uh, comes down to creating tires. And if we have a look at the industry chains and select the tire cargo, let's see, where's tires? Uh, th there we go. You can see that tires go to an assembly plant, they don't go anywhere else. And that's what the title of this live stream is. I think something to do with assembly plant. Kind of thought we was doing that. Um, so the assembly plant needs vehicle parts, bodies, engines, and tires. So this is like the first quarter towards getting the assembly plant up and running. And even then, we could probably make a lot of improvements to it. A hot country looks insane. It is. It is uh, most of them in furs is pretty insane, to be honest. It is most. Most of it is. Um, any idea why tire is misspelled? I don't think it is. T Y R E. Is that American? I think. We'll 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 you know just leave that. I'm not no idea. I'm not an open TTD dev. Okay. Um, my headset's a bit loud today. I feel like I'm shouting over the music. There we go. The window spawn spot slightly too far off to the left. Yeah, that's that's because I'm running OpenTD in window mode. Um, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, it's American English. So we talked a lot last time about these routes. Oh, I just realized we've got cargo flow turned on for this. We don't want that. We want this. There we go. We talked about these routes and where we were going to put the assembly plant and in the end we decided last time that it was going to be in the middle of this lake. In fact, there is the sign. Assembly plant. 
So let's do that. Let's pop in uh, a bunch of land. Actually, we'll need to unpause the game. So we'll unpause the game. And I think we'll do it in the middle of this body of water. Or we'll try to anyway. There we go. And we'll do fund new industry, assembly plant, fund there. Okay, folks, there we go. Now we're going to pause this again because we're going to have to think about, was that 11 million? Wow. I just didn't even look because we had four. Huh? Oh, I spent 11 million on land. The assembly plant was 3.2 million. So there we go. Yeah, the land was 11 million. We need, we're going to need more land as well. But don't worry, we've got a relatively good company here. If you look at the operating profit, it's quite healthy. It's generally on the up. The more we put on, the better it will be. Now, the assembly plant is going to be a struggle. Because we've got four different things coming in to the assembly plant. And then we've got three different things that get produced from the assembly plant so we've got things that have got to come out uh, and that's going to be difficult now I don't know what length of train to use with this so for some of the network like over here at Krillo's Coke uh, we've got slightly longer trains with dual steam engines um, over here uh, at Krillo's Coke for the loading of these trains here I think these are 10 length yeah we've got 10 length trains there Tyre is British English. There you are then. I wonder who gets the assembly plant line. I think, like, we we need to put somebody into the tyre um, junction, I think. It's like all the significant sections along the area are, we're going to use from viewer plus subscribers. Why spend 11 million on land and a few more in an industry when you can build one and existing lands and cut the costs out? I can, yeah, that's a good question, Jack. Uh, the reason is, is that, and we spoke a lot about this, uh, I think, on the last stream. We wanted to put it somewhere where we had a lot of space to play with. So if you look at the topography of the land, your map of the world. There you go, look. You can see that there's great big hillsides here, there, and everywhere. Um all around here and there's little mountains and stuff and all you've got all these industries in the way as well all getting in the way of building railway lines and all that sort of stuff if we put it in a body of water we know that the land we build will be flat and uh we know that there's going to be no industries or towns nearby it gives us a certain amount of land space and breathing space that's why we nearly put it in this one in this big pond down here but it's just it was just a bit too far down south so there we go uh gabriel says sorry if i offended you there mr hellish gaming uh been lurker here for six to seven years wow this is probably the perhaps the nicest most friendly community i've ever seen on youtube twitch thank you so for all so far well i'm i'm glad glad you're about i'm not sure why you thought i was offended Oh, okay. Uh, what is this? Adult Games Channel. I see what you said there. No, I was just confused because I, I wasn't sure what you meant. That's all. So there we go. Um, so yeah. So we've got the assembly plant in, but we're going to have to bring a lot of stuff to it. So we're going to have to put a lot of stations in. What have we got? We've only got standard railway. So today, I think the only thing we're going to be able to do is get tyres out and bring them down here. But then we can start planning the rest. Now, where are we going to put the tyre plant line? I think a station like this, where we are using six lanes to pick up and then head on out, is probably one of the best. It'd be quite nice if we could do it so that it lines up with that piece of track so that we don't have to move around these <laughs> the map looks like an accurate representation of Finland because of all the lakes I've, I don't actually know anything about Finland 
Not really. Um, so then I'm, I'm currently thinking that if we have... I mean, the exits here just pair up, so that's fine. So let's go into building mode. So if we do something like this, and we say that is the exit to the station, then the platform's there and goes up to here. We can spread the station to connect it, and then that leaves us enough room for another station over here. Hopefully. Uh, the only problem is, is that this industry is in the way. Oh, great. Brilliant. I don't know what to do about that. We might have to bring it closer and leave less room over here. Okay, let's let's do this the other way round, okay? Because that industry is in the way, we'll start up against that industry and then start building things down. So this is our back line. Okay, and this is going to be the secondary line. That, mm, I want a secondary line to come out about here. I wonder if there's any way we can improve that. I don't know. But if we bring this to there, that's where that part of the station starts. I guess there would be a slight wiggle here. Wiggles don't slow trains down. Although, having said that, it doesn't look like there's enough room for the signals off the back of the platform. So we're going to have to do it like this. Okay, that might work. What is that factory making? Uh, it's making salt and soda ash. So then this would be our length 10 station to there. Do we think we should go length 10? I don't know. I feel like we should go length 10. There you go. So that would be the exit, the six exit lanes. This could potentially be a very busy line. So we have to make sure that we plan ahead for it. Uh, hey, Hellish, got to catch a bit of your live stream. Keep up the fun. Thank you. Uh, welcome to 2022. So, let's see. I think that will leave enough room here for another station if we need it. I mean, look, that's the size of that drop-off station. This one's dropping off two different things, which is why it's bigger. Um, so, this pickup station is going to be fine. What are we picking up? Tyres. It's going to be a goods pickup station, isn't it? So if we go railway, stations, that orientation, and we do uh, not high security. Good station A. Let's do a drag and drop and good station A. I like that. I think that's good. Now, the only problem with this station is at the moment, it doesn't actually supply tires. Or accept anything. Uh, but we're going to do a spread station just to, to do that. Now, the good news is, is that with the industry stations renewal, we don't have to like put it down a bus depot or something. We can just put like a processed products pile down and just slowly eke out the station until it overlaps. So then we've got like an area here of processed products um we can pop in a couple of um forklifts to move all those crates around um and then we can decorate it we'll do that later do it later uh so then we've got to figure out how we're going to get this track in and round so because this is a row row station, we don't need signals on the entrance. We can just merge straight in. So if we do that, we can put the signal here to go in. And signal there to go in. So that works. And then we can put the depots in if we need to and bring it round. Do we want to, like, put a length 10 gap here in to try and reduce 
train slow down? I don't think we do, do we? Because we've split the trains into two different sections. So let's just do this long enough to get a double depot in. Because if we're going to do a forced double depot, the trains are going to be sl going slow anyway. So we put forced double depot in. Get rid of the forbidden piece of track. And then... Just do that. I think we ought to leave like a train length before we merge the tracks. So what was that? That's about five. That's six. So if we do this. Hmm. What do we think of that chat? Let's have a look at the feedback, shall we? Um... Station decorations are good for extension cheese. Yeah, I mean, in this case, I'm not using extension cheese to improve the amount of catchment. I'm just doing it so that we can fit the stations in at all. Uh, so there you go. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Way too sharp for the 10 long trains. Yeah, it is. But the other option is going out over the water. So we don't know what we think there with people. The trains are going to stop anyway. That's right. They've got to go and slow down to go in and out of these depots. So I, I think it doesn't matter. New viewer plus subscriber. We've got a new pl viewer plus subscriber. Take me. Thank you very much for the subscription. Uh, that actually has put us up a number. We're up to 47 now. So that means that was... Uh, a new sub, I think, rather than a, a resub. So thank you very much. There we are. The the notification in Twitch worked. I wonder if the notification in Discord worked. The notification in Discord worked as well. Everything's starting to work at the beginning of the year. But there we go. Uh, I don't know if you are watching live right now or, or not, but if you are, thank you very much for supporting the channel. Uh, we've got an, uh, another, mess oh God, another message in the chat here. I'm trying to keep up with chat and build trains at the same time. Uh, second time um, catching your streams. Watched all your current Open TTD uh, videos before today. Wow. You're doing your own Steel Town. Cool. That sounds fun. Pull purple hair and come in. I've told you. £50 Steam Voucher, not purple hair. Maybe we'll save the hair stuff for another charity stream. So we're going to put the signal in here, and then we'll put a signal right before the uh, depot as well. And this signal, and this one can be moved as well. There we go. So we've got one right before the depot to help it choose which um, depot it's going to use. One right before the station to help decide which platform it's going to use. And then one right before the split to help decide which whoa set of depots it's going to use. Um, you just need to mod. Uh, you just need a mod to add Hellish's face to OpenTTD. No, my face is already in OpenTTD. Now, the only thing that I don't like is how we've got this depot stuck here, and I can't think of a way around that. I mean, we can um, lower the land height here to just nip under it. I mean, that would work. But I'm not sure I like that solution. And then, of course, we want some depots as well on the exit, don't we? And, of course, a depots here on the exit is going to be difficult because this one's up. Hmm. Ooh, idea. Right. What if we do... Because we've gone round that, we do this. Give ourselves some space like that. Let's get rid of all this. That was all a silly idea. We just do a big diagonal out to there, and off we go. I mean, it doesn't even have to be that far out. Um, that that far out would do it. And we don't want to go too far because then you've got a massive diagonal before anything else. There we go. That's all right. That'll do the job. Now we're going to make these optional depots. So we'll remove the forbidden bit of track. Uh, pop a signal in just before. I think we're okay. 
Although here, this wants to be a dual track, if I remember correctly. So we want a crossover. Um, and I'm kind of thinking this crossover might not work very well, but we'll, we'll work on that later. Um, let's see what here. Martin says, how come you don't use planes? The main reason I don't use planes is because I find no challenge with using them. Plop it down, plop it down, make a plane go between them, and then that's it until the airport clocks up, which it inevitably will do. So I don't really find a challenge. Like There's a, there's a limitation on how good the airports are, and you can't design it past that point. It just won't work. Um, and there's also no effort into getting up to that point so it, it doesn't provide me with a challenge which is a lot of the reasons why i place it's a very often a reason why i don't play some games because it might be a good game but it might be too easy and i just don't get a challenge out of it so there we go that that's that's why i tend not to use planes uh, lane says maybe if we bug hellish enough with the hair he'll continue to ignore us uh, he just kept ignoring ignoring me on giving brandon a much needed bionic arm after he lost his fingers in Wormworld. I mean, I don't think bugging me. I'd say the same thing to you as I say to my daughter. Boning about it ain't going to change my mind. <laughs> That's what I tell her. Uh, Scruff says, have you ever watched Biffer on YouTube? Uh, I I have seen some of Biffer's videos. I've watched a few... I don't watch Biffa's videos like religiously, like I do some other videos. So, for example, I probably seen every single video that Tom Scott's ever done, and there's other YouTube channels where I watch a lot of their content when they put it out. It's like when they put a new video out, there's probably like an eighty percent chance I'll watch it. Um, Biffa's one of the ones that like is on my radar, but I don't watch regularly. There's some good stuff in there. Um, and oh yeah, planes aren't really simulated accurately enough. There's there's other things going on there. Yeah. Um, I. You start. Uh, let's see. Trying to catch up with chat a little bit. <laughs> You're trying to <laughs> trying to be cheeky again. Don't be cheeky. So be cheeky. Nobody, nobody's being cheeky here. Uh, okay. Patrick Dell says, "Hey, Halish, uh, your videos on OpenTTD that you watched earlier really helped." Through uh, a few rough patches, thanks for making the series. Uh, you play played OG TTD on, on your your first PC. Oh wow! I think I played Open TTD on my first PC as well. So yeah. But yeah, we definitely need to get a lane in, into RimWorld. I would love to do another um, another RimWorld series. I would love to do another RimWorld series. Okay, so here, what we're going to do is we're going to get these lines out so that there's at least a 10 length, um, which I think that is. And then we'll do... Well, I don't know where they're going, actually. I think they're coming across this massive lake, heading in somewhere over here. So are we just going to plow through the lake? We've, got, we've only got 32 million, which sounds like a lot of money, but really isn't. I think I'm just going to start doing a diagonal. Like from here. Ooh, we can't. There's that. Okay, let's see if we can move it over a little bit. Nope. Mm, yep. The those antennas like are a real pain, aren't they? There we go. I'm pretty sure they're only in the game because they were in the original game. There we go. So in addition to enjoying OpenTTD, I've also been enjoying quite a lot of Minecraft recently. Uh, both general sessions with the Viewer Plus subscribers and getting ready to record content. It's uh, been great fun to do. If you want to see some of that, remember we've got uh, a Minecraft stream on Wednesday, which is actually me and the Viewer Plus subscribers, Wednesday lunchtime it is, uh, fighting the Ender Dragon. And it's going to be Elaine's first time fighting the ender dragon so that's quite cool also my mouse cursor went absolutely crazy then so just need to be steady um so there we go yeah and what we've also got other things going on it's, it's been great fun 
<laughs> yeah, I, d I don't know where the line's going. I d I've got a rough direction where the line's going, but I'm not really sure. You played TTD on the Amiga? Wow, that is way back. Jack the Transport says, What kind of transport do you recommend for a very short distance but very high capacity cargo routes? Trains. High capacity, you can't do... like. It's almost impossible to make decent money with ships because ships are so slow, even though they're high capacity. Boats. I don't think so, boats. Um, and then, like, road vehicles, you would need too many of them for the high capacity. I think I, I do think trains. Yeah. Oh, Elaine might not be able to come to the dragon fight on Wednesday lunch? Oh, no. That'll be a pain if that's the case. We'll have to see. Maybe we can work something out to, to try and find like a better time. Maybe you could come and do it in lunch. We'll see. We'll see what's going on. Um, and also, yeah, we, we're, we've got an EVE Online Corporation event tomorrow. So there's lots of stuff going on. Kick off the new year with this, that and the other. see uh there's going to be all there's going to be a bit of change there's got at the bare minimum there's going to be a new schedule and the new schedule will have probably 80 ish percent of the stuff that's on the current schedule maybe just in different times and places and i think the minecraft is going to have to move from being live to being like videos instead oops didn't mean to do that so let's do that and yes i've done it like that on purpose i think we need we need a uh, depots in which is what i'm thinking at the minute so i don't know how much this is going to cost but a lot of money. I think we might have to unpause the game. Mining is way better as a group, says Jackamac. Yes. Landers here. Hey, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Now, I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. I need to think. Yeah, it's an expensive land bridge. And it needs to come all the way down here. And then I'm not sure which way we're going to go. Whether we're going to try and cut through this hillside or not. Or come, I think we'll probably just come in round here. So I'm not sure. We're going we're gonna to unpause the game. That's for sure. And I'm just wanting to get some depots in. Um, I feel like this is this was a mistake. Uh, it's only going to cost me forty grand to get rid of it. Apparently, oh yeah, it's cheap. I feel like doing, yeah, doing that sort of thing on the land is is a mistake. Doing depots on the sea is a mistake. Is what I meant to say. Right, we spent a bit there, and I didn't mean to. Never mind. It's not the end of the world. Or is it? I don't know. So if we come out to there, we can have depots here. Just not quite enough room. There we go. The only problem is, is that the depot can't just come straight out there, the depot line. There we go. So we're having optional double depots off the off the main line, and then the next set will have to be next to them. So we'll see how it goes. Maybe go around the lake. I'm thinking, kind of maybe. We'll see. I don't know. 
we'll work it out as we go along. This this is a learning process. Okay, let's get remi uh, remove the forbidden piece of track and the crossing. There we go. Now the next set of depots will have to go here, which means the main line is there and there. Connect that up. Maybe, maybe just the depots be on the land, and then we can do like a bridge over. Um, so then we want to go, ideally ten back here. So that lake, uh, that river's in the way. There we go. How long's that? So that is ten to there. Jobs are good and get rid of that bit of hillside. Get the right key combination. Got to got to use the key combinations. Otherwise, just like building railway lines, just takes way too long. All right. Even if you get the wrong key combo, it's still better in the long run. Okay, there we go. So we've got some depots there. That's good. Uh, in what year did you start your playthrough? I'm not sure, actually. I can't remember. Can't remember. Would it be cheaper to do islands with bridges going between? Potentially. But not massively cheaper, I don't think. Um... Apparently in Romania there's trains that will go five kilometers an hour because of the bad railways. I've never been to Romania or, or, or seen anything about the railway network in Romania. I've seen a bit of the Canadian railways. That's where I went on honeymoon. It was interesting. Um, should you use a shuttle to help clear tires at the tire production hub or, sh or not? Because you feel like that's cheaty. Well, it depends up to you, doesn't it, Jack? You know, you if you feel it's cheaty, then maybe you, maybe you shouldn't do it. Okay, let's just do that's that was half a million. Up to so that's a million there. I think if we come across here and maybe where are we? Yeah, I think just come straight across here and just use this bit of land. Use this bit of land. It's cheaper to dig through this hillside, maybe. Just snake round there. Rather than cut straight across here, we just cut across these smaller bits. I started in 25. Wow. Right, how much is that going to cost? Just about a million. That's not too bad. Okay, can we get past this town? And we'd need to delete all of that. And I did! Brilliant. Okay. Well, that went a lot easier than what I thought it would. Um, yeah, you know what? We're going to get rid of that bit as well. So keep an eye out. Uh, we haven't got the next viewers game planned yet. Doesn't mean we won't have one. Okay, so at some point soon, I'll be looking to see if, when I can figure out when the next viewers game is. I'm going to be honest, it's probably the next time <laughs> my wife and daughter visit the in-laws. And, and I don't go. Most of the time I do go with them, but sometimes I don't. I'm trying to figure out where I can put in another set of depots. Um, I could probably do... I mean, look here. We've used the useless depots there. I don't know about that. Jackamack says, I remember viewers game one. Wow, that's a long time ago. Hey, Clark, welcome to the stream. 
Welcome to the stream. Um, I mean, I could quite easily do another depot there, but I'm, I'm not sure I want to. Maybe we cut across the water here and do depots on the water. Uh, I'm not sure. All I know is that we need to pick up tyres and we need to get them down here. Maybe I should do the station on the other end now. I'm not sure about that. <sighs> this is difficult. Or as my daughter, daughter might say, this is trifical. I don't know why she says that. She knows difficult is the right word, but she says trifical anyway. I feel like if we just hug the coastline here... And then use that as our starting point. There we go. Let's dig that up a little bit. Dig that in. Get them to meet. I think that is just... Oops, didn't mean to do that bit. I think actually we'll just get rid of this bit altogether. So digging through hillside is, inf well, near infinitely cheaper <laughs> than trying to dig a, uh, build land up over water. I mean, I do like the idea of potentially using bridges, but then I don't want to have to worry about grading the bridges later and all that sort of thing, so... I'm not too sure. Right, i tell you what I am sure about. We should have some depots around here. Whoa, steady. Depots around here. So what we could probably do is use that there. To get some depots in. And we only have to dig out onto the... Uh, onto the land just a tiny bit here just to get that in. Oh, I didn't mean to do that Well, I did it a little bit more than what I was planning. Never mind We definitely need more depots in so there we go um... That'll do that'll do So getting these ones in not a problem Uh, and I know I just removed that piece of track, so bear with me a second. There we go. So those ones are easy. In fact, this one is easy as well. Because that actually just goes in there. So let's now try and see what we can do for the other side. I don't know. Uh, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do this down here. You don't think depots are required there? I mean, it's a, it's a little bit of a jaunt from the last set of depots, and we're going to have a big diagonal here. And I don't like doing diagonals on depots on diagonals, so I'm doing them before the diagonal because we're not going to have any more. That's why. Um, Elaine says, I found two viewers games, number one on YouTube, one for Minecraft. That's another thing as well. We've done a Minecraft viewers game, number one. We never did number two. Maybe we need to do that. Number one was a Skyblock challenge, which was, it was fun. I enjoyed that. So we're going to come down here with these railway lines, but I'm not quite sure what's next. Uh, maybe we go round these? T no, we're going to... We I feel like going across the water here and then coming in. Because then we can just cut across here and then start coming round into the station. Yeah, I think that's worth it. And we can just... 
put the lines together maybe as well. Elaine's like, oh, I can win that in seconds. First one to die right uh, wins, right? You'd be surprised how sometimes it can be really difficult to die fast in Minecraft. Um, like, if you can't find a tree to jump off, or something like that, it can be really difficult. Okay, how much, how much, we've got 29 million left. We haven't even bought the trains yet. Um, but I think we're going to be okay. If I can press the right key combination. So it's E for that, then holding control. We come down here, and we come down here. That was only about a million for each one of those land bridges. We did two of them there. The track costs are pretty inconsequential in, in comparison. Just do a bit of tidying up. And then... I feel like if we keep going diagonally down, we've got... We just keep going diagonally down. Until we hit the land, and then I think we go across and put in another set of depots. I almost feel like depots need to be in here as well. <laughs> Fastest death percent, lol. Yeah. Okay, folks. Um, I'm going to grab a drink. I'll leave you with the Be Right Back screen. And I will be back in just a couple of minutes. And we'll figure out how this railway line's going to go. I'll see you in a moment. Yep, there we go. Uh, I'm pretty sure yeah. we've hit 2k. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it! Wow, that's, that's going to cost me. That, that's going to cost me 25 pound. <laughs> and yes, it is 1 a.m. We're going on to 1 a.m. We're going to get. That is the most money we've ever raised on stream. We've never hit 2k before. <sighs> you guys are amazing. You guys are actually amazing. A hundred percent, folks. I can't wait. I'm not, I, I'm probably going to be too tired by one o'clock, but in the morning I can't wait for the social media post just to put that a hundred percent out there and just show everybody and say thank you. There it is. It's just updated at the very bottom. Party Piggy did a hundred pound donation to get us over the line. We've actually gone over by fifteen pence, everybody. Fifteen pence. <laughs> so we're going to pause the game there. And take a bow, Elaine. Because I mean, after DP, after DP, which of course we knew DP was gonna yeah. win. DP is so good, and it's so fantastic to have DP coming on, showing us what can be done. Um, but after DP, so first of all, round of applause for DP. Fantastic work there. Brilliant lines. We saw the big line that DP did all the way around the outside. Um, but apart from DP, second place for me and Elaine. Maybe I'll have, I'll to, have do to do a habit. Right then, folks. We are back. Um, I'm still not quite sure where I'm going to do this or how I'm going to do this. So we've got depots at the station. We've got depots before we cross the water. We've got depots before we do this angle, and also I've got no idea how I'm going to do this depot. Maybe we just put a depot on the line and just just deal with potential slowdowns on that one line at that one point. We'll see. Um, then. We've got this section, so if we do need more depots, we could do that later. I think we're just going to come straight down. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to come straight down. Uh, there's only a little bit of land, I think. That, no, there's no land we have to deal with. It's just destroying of ponds. I say ponds. It's a river, isn't it? River tiles. There we go. And I think this is only going to cost us like another million as well. So we've got plenty of cash for this line. Bruh. 
I remember that when me me and Wizard Brandon did um, a Minecraft event together, um, we did three events in a team of two, like three UHCs almost in a row. There was a test one, the actual one, and then a revenge one. And in every single one, me and Brandon managed to come first. Um, it's not like me and Brandon are the dream team or anything. It's like... We're both relatively good players. We're not the best, but we're relatively good. But in every single one, we got good luck as well. Okay, we're definitely going to have to do some depots here. It's just like we've traveled too far not to put some depots in. So if we do this like that. And that's the middle. So that's the depot. You're going to have nine there so depots go in here there we go excellent uh, that's nine to there that's nine to there so this one's where it's going to come over and then that one will just crash into it so there we go little bit of t I, I I know I haven't done any signals yet and then this will come down we might have to buy a bit of land to get it past these towns and then this one if we put it in so that the depots come down here we can do something very similar like this so depot depot is that a little bit short tiny bit short it doesn't Oh, these mm, could actually move it along. Because we've got room on this side, I think. I do want to leave a gap between these two down here, just because I like the look of it. I know I haven't on the rest of the line, so that might annoy some people. I hope it doesn't. It probably will. Inconsistencies like that uh, I do find challenging. Let's see. So let's do this. Oh, that that's that works nicely. So then, can I get? Yeah, that's where the depots are going in down here. Um, we'll do those ones there. And get the bits of truck in the right way round. There we go. That looks great. It's nice and simple, nice and easy, and it's nice and spread out and we got the space it's all about planning brandon says we won two versus four that's true having said that the four team i think split up at a roughly the time that we were attacking them so we did quite well um yeah i mean the number of deaths i get on a minecraft server very much depends on like the server the the type of things that we're doing it's it's so like at the moment, I haven't got any decent armor. I'm just using the iron from the iron farm that's next to my work, uh, my workshop. So and I, uh, well, okay. The the first time I had some diamond gear, I I was trying to keep it. I was trying quite well to keep it. But when I lost it, I was like, well, that's it now. I've got no equipment that I'm worried about losing. So I don't worry about dying at the minute. I love this little kink in this turn. That's great. I think we might need some depots here, but we've got plenty of money. Right, let's get this station in. So we're gonna do, we're gonna do a row row, but we're gonna have. Well, are we gonna do a row row? Oh, I've just had an idea. Shall we? Where's the station design? Over here. Yeah. Should we use this station design or something similar to it where we have the automatic kind of turnaround sort of thing? Um, I, I think we should I think we should use this where there's um, nothing wrong with a little kink. <laughs> I think a terminus. No, I think a, this sort of row row. This um autom what is it it's a forced depot auto waiting station thing i i think we should do that 
Uh, Elaine says, uh, no, it's Minecraft stuff, I think. Yeah, it's Minecraft stuff. Yeah. Gills, Gills is Terminus. <laughs> no kink shaming here, says Patrick. We, do we need a t-shirt? I'm going to put it on the list. Uh, um, and it's just going to be the track. Forced Auto Row Row. With queuing. Or whatever you want to call it. The factory gets shut down before the, the product's delivered. Well, with this series, we're playing with the game pause. So it's like hardly been... I think it's only just been built. So we'll be fine. But yeah, it could get shut down. We'll just have to put it back in again. That's why we're taking our time and, and not worrying about it. Right, where's my main list? Master Hellish. Merch. T-shirts. Do we want a T-shirt or a sticker? Nothing wrong with a little kink. And then we get, we'll get we do some lines with a kink in it. Yeah, I, I remember you as the one that suggested it as a T. And I, at first I thought it was a daft idea. Then I remembered that it probably wasn't a daft idea. Actually, let's do a game giveaway. I've still got a few prizes left from the charity streams. Not a lot. Uh, but I've got a giveaway for a New Beginning Final Cut. So, at least I think I have. I'm pretty sure I have. Let's just double check my list. Yeah, according to my list, I've got that one available. So let's start the giveaway for everyone. Now remember, you must be watching on Twitch to enter the giveaway. Uh, following the instructions that the bot is posting about how to enter the giveaway, you've got a grand total of six minutes to do it. Uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure how this is going to work in terms of feeding trains in and out. But we've got two in and two out there. Maybe I should start with the station. So we've got two in. Maybe we should bring them in on the outside. Hmm. You do a comb terminus? Yeah, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Let's get... Like, the station as far away as possible. And central as possible? Yeah, we'll center it. We'll put it in the middle. We'll put it in this orientation. We'll do it down this strip of land. And then we'll work the other ones around it. So I'm thinking goods type B. For dropping off. Ooh. Here we go. So we've got two tracks coming in. I, I feel like... Where is it? This one. I feel like doing something like this, but I don't know how many platforms we should have. Let's get a viewport. There we go. Um, what do we think, folks? How many platforms do you think you got, we should have here? Uh, is this mo uh, modded? Yes, it is. And you're in it. You're in it. Where are you? You're over here. Uh, let's unhide stuff. This is your uh, your bulk terminal for being a viewer plus subscriber. So there we go. Uh, your name is in the game. We've been naming sections of the railway. So thank you very much. And Elaine's got to get going. All right, Elaine, take care. Yeah, it's with Steel Town Furs. I like to try and put people in the game if I can. Okay, so I'm going to do a drag and drop. Brandon says 62 platforms. I don't think Brandon meant 62 platforms. Let's do a 10 by 2 like... Let's do 10 by 4. Let's... Oh, is this going to fit? Uh... I think it will actually. Um, no. Hang on. There we go. That's what I was trying to do. 
So, there is one depot. And there is the other depot. Now, I don't think they're forced. I think a train could actually come down here and... Is that a 90 degree turn on the other side? So, trains can do that. But they can't do that or that. No, it is forced. It is forced. I just had to double check that in my mind. So then these are the two entrances and these are the two exits. So we're going to have a bit of crossing over to do here. Um, actually, let's do the exits separate. Like, push them outwards. And that way on the exit we can put... An, op an optional double depot. There we go. So we've got a force depot on the way in and an optional depot on the way out. J-Bay's here. Hey, J-Bay. Welcome to the stream. And then I guess somehow we've got to get this one. Uh, let's Let's see, that's 10 there. Now let's see which way round these are, because I've completely forgotten. So, the trains... Oh God, have I done this the right way for our network? Oh, I haven't, have I? Uh, trains are driving... Yeah, I've built this station the wrong way around. I mean, it's not a massive problem. Uh, it, all it means... Is that here... We have an optional crossover... With... These these signals like this and we remove these ones and we just add a little extra bit of track for good station A and then we just remove a little bit of good station A and pop the signals back there we go uh, pop those ones in there. Remove those signals. And then let them merge here. No, we don't want to merge. There we go. Everything's fine. It's 11pm and it's 24 degrees outside. Hot, yeah, 24 degrees is too hot for me. If the house gets above 22 degrees, I feel warm. So, yeah. So, I fixed that. All I need now is the signals before it. Um, so, they come in. They're coming down on the outside line. That, that's the outside line. Outside line. Outside line. Outside line. So this line is the return line, and that connects up to this. Okay, so that's fine. If I can get the right keys again. There we go. So that's the return line for going back. I'm glad I worked that earlier. So that I think let's let's neaten this up. There's no need for that extra kink. And then if we put just a little tunnel in here, like this, uh, we can then make that connect up. No, not connect. Join this one. Which, I'm going to put a little kink in. I had the choice of a kink or a tunnel, and I'm, I've gone for kink. 
And to be honest, I'm I'm gonna do that. Let's let's give the station some breathing room. And then we'll then do something here. Just to make it a little bit more symmetrical. There we go. Oh, I like that. That looks good, right? Uh, Mac Mac says, just got into Open TTD. Just got into it? You're about 25 years behind. <laughs> no, it's a good game. It's been going for a long time. It's really cool. Um, I'm glad the videos were helpful. Glad they were helpful. Very much so. Okay. There we are. We do have to chop a little bit of mountainside there, but only a little bit, so that's good. And then connect that here. I'm actually really happy with the way that this station has come about. It's a relatively small footprint. It should be relatively efficient. Yes, it's missing signals, but whatever. Um, I guess we just need signals going in here. Ooh, that looks like it's gone a long way. Should it go all the way up to the um, points there? Yeah, okay. We're still using, like, really close signals, aren't we? Yes, we are on this Let's Play. There's there's no maintenance fee in this in this one. If we was having maintenance, we would definitely tone down the number of signals. So here we've got a split, so you want uh, a signal just before the depots, just before the depots, and a signal before you merge back onto the track. And that should do it. And then again, this way, you've got a signal as you split. Push that down the railway line. Signal as you split. One before the, and then one as you join. There we go. That should do it quite nicely. You bought Transport Tycoon in 1995, says JBay. I wish, I wish I knew when I bought Transport Tycoon. I still remember sitting in my, in my dad's car, uh, getting a lift back from town with the box in my hand. Looking forward to getting home to play it. Okay, those signals go all the way down here to this section. And signal just before there. And there as well. And I guess I ought to do these signals too. Oh no. Accidentally pressed a key combination then. It's not the end of the world. There we go. That's all looking good. So again, before going into the depots, we've got some signals. Uh, before merging back on, we've got some signals. Push them down. And... Before merging back in, push them down to the tracks. One on there, and one there as well. There we go. Right, uh, we also need some here, just so that we can send them down there. All the way back to the station! Yes, okay. Right, we've still got a good amount left. DJX says, when games came on CD, I think the first versions of Open T uh, of TTD uh, came on floppy, but I don't think there was many. I think, yeah, a lot of them came on CDs. JB says, my friend worked at a computer shop, saw it there. Uh, Wizardbrand says, the real question is, who's going to own the tyre line? Yes, this whole tyre network here, uh, this needs a name. It's going to be a viewer plus subscriber, so we'll generate that shortly. I've still got one of the boxes. I've still got one of the boxes. I've got it on my shelf. Here we go. 
Some of you, some of you um, might not have seen this before. Um, Transport Tycoon. Inbox. Um, it says packaging and manual. 1994. A lot. Here we go. Let's go cam two on this. There we go. Transport Tycoon with my train top. There we go. Um, yeah, see, this is a CD-ROM, and it was published by Power Plus. And it's, uh, like I said, this is one of the first versions. It's not the first. But we've still got the Power Plus registration card, uh, and the manual, and the C CD. There we go, Transport Tycoon, Ooh, and World Editor. Uh, and it even comes with a little Power Plus range leaflet, which if I can see if I can get to show you this. Um, it comes with Worms United, World Rally Fever, and then we've got Civ, the original Civ, um, Pirates Gold, Star Trek Next Generation Final Unity and a load of other stuff as well including Transport Tycoons in there um, Railroad Tycoon is in there as well yeah that's pretty cool that is so that sits on my shelf um, pride of place it is uh, amongst other things that I've got up there I what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna do a room tour on my second channel at some point so uh, that that is hopefully gonna be early this year I've been putting off so many different things um, because of various different reasons and I just think it's about time I got through them and did them so uh, I'm going to do an office tour. I'm going to do a desk tour separately. We've got Shed Part 2 to do. So this is all on my second channel. Um, go over to my website, masterhellish.net, or, or have a look on, um, on, on Hellish Places and, and find out uh, which um, you know, all that sort of stuff, like where the second channel is. Because if you want to see more, more than just gaming, there's all sorts on there. So, yeah, check that out. Uh, right, okay. So before we carry on, uh, with this bit and find the viewer that we're naming it after I'm going to pick a winner for the prize giveaway and the winner is Take Me who is actually our, our newest viewer plus subscriber so thank you very much uh, I'm just going to go over to Twitch now and find uh, I'm going to try and get a whisper over to them and see if I can get the prize over to you Let's see. Yep, there you go. So I'm just going to whisper you now. There we are. I've, I've sent that code over to you. Let me know if there's any problems, but that should be all right. Congratulations for winning the giveaway. Um, people, are, people are reminiscing now about various things. Power Plus, is that like Viewer Plus? I don't think so. Gran Turismo. Oh, I love the old Gran Turismo games. Yeah. Definitely. Um, let's see. JBay says, I would work uh, 1 to 22 shifts. So it's, well, that's a long shift. Come home and play until the sun came up. Games like Death Rally, SimCity, oh, the original SimCity and all that sort of stuff. And Brandon says Micropose still publish games. Interesting. The first Gran Turismo of the main series in nine years. Wow. Uh, Nick says, me seeing your vertical monitor makes me want one. What's worse, Nick, is I have two. I've got one each side. Uh, so And each one split into three. So it's like having seven screens in total. It is probably one of the best setups I have ever had. 
So there we go. Um, your dad got his first computer a few days after Tex Inst distributed the TI-99. I've not heard of that one. Not heard of that one. <laughs> My monitors look like a keep star from Eve. Yeah. Vertical monitors are great for small spaces and stuff. And they're great for, like, if you're going to do vertical monitors like mine, I would highly recommend... I know we're segueing from OpenTTD a little bit here. But if you have a main display, I would highly recommend you go for a HD or 1440p screen, but with a high refresh rate. Because then you get your games with a good refresh rate. Um, you've got a good balance. Mine's 1440p at four, 144 hertz. So you get a good balance of refresh rate and, and resolution. If you're going to go vertical with the side ones, don't worry about refresh rates. Get something that is only 60, uh, 60 hertz. Uh, because then you can get something that's a higher um, resolution. So my vertical monitor is a 4K 60 hertz, which means that I can have really good quality small windows. It's crisp, clear, uh, and the, t the little windows on the vertical. So... And if I... I don't know if it will work. Yeah, so if I drag one one of my three vertical windows on top of OpenTTD, and this is the chat, you can see that a third of a vertical 4K screen is almost as big as a 1440p screen in terms of proper pixels and resolution. And also, yes, there's everybody saying hi. <laughs> um so yeah that i i highly recommend it i uh, with my setup i got that bit spot on i'm really happy with that um right then let's let's crack on because we're digressing we need to choose a name for this so the look of lucky viewer post try that again the lucky i'm gonna have a drink <laughs> The lucky viewer plus person whom these stations will be named after is Jimster Gaming. I don't think Jimster's um, been in any of these. So I've just made a note of that. And what we'll do is uh, we'll rename these now. So we've got... Uh, what's coming in down this line? I can't remember now. Rubber. Okay. So let's rename that one to... Oh, no. Hang on a minute. It doesn't want to be that. It wants to be Jimster Rubber. So thank you very much for being a viewer plus subscriber, Jimster. You and the other viewer plus subscribers keep this um, keep this channel going with all its costs and so forth, the streaming and hosting and all that sort of thing. So thank you very much. Um, and viewer plus subscriptions are you, you can get them for less than three pound fifty a month. So it's not like ten pound or anything ridiculous like that. It is a relatively cheap thing. Um. You already drew. Take me, take me the newest subscriber. What do you mean? I already drew. I'm confused. Um, let's see. What's this station bringing in? Well, this is tires. This is where's the. This is where the tires are coming out. So let's rename that one to Jimster's tires. Ooh, I'm not in the box. Just I, I did I spell that right? I don't think I did. Ah, oh, it's R E S. Right, okay, hang on. There we go. That'll do for now. Rick says, uh, your man just discovered open TDD through your vids, thanks. I'm glad you did. Um, a lot of people have a lot of fun with OpenTTD, and I hope you do too. So the, the next thing we need to do is get some trains going to pick up 
all of these tires and take them down this massively ridiculous line into the assembly plant, which... Would it be unfair to name the assembly plant after a viewer plus subscriber? Because it's kind of going to be like the actual hub of the net entire network. Did I make it? What? I'm not sure what Brandon is talking about. I'm confused. But never mind. For the new, uh, the station name, it's new sub came up and then the convo drifted and you redrew. So, um, this here is, when I switch to this screen, this is the screen that I use to then draw the person that I use. And we don't use the newest sub, we use the thank you to. Because the thank you to is a random person out of those 47. And it changes constantly. So we can redraw and sort that out. So that's how we choose a random viewer plus subscriber. We use the thank you to section there because it is random. It picks it out and it refreshes quite regularly. That, that's why we use that. So you'll, you'll, you'll come up one day. I'm sure you will. Nick says, in the US, we spell it uh, uh, differently. Yes, of course you do. We, we, we actually spoke a little bit like, about that earlier on. Okay, let's get trains in because I'm getting sidetracked with game boxes and talking to monitors and all that sort of thing so let's get a double steam train and then we want to be transporting tires where's tires tires let's buy and refit these oh hang on a minute that just wants to go in there and we've made this section of the railway line handle 10 length trains which I think for industry, as long as it's not a primary industry, it's the best way to go. Might even be the best way to go for some primary industries. Like if you've got a, a, a like a pre hub or a mini hub where you've got one, more than one industry in one place, like th three or four, then I think ten length trains are appropriate. So I guess we do its orders now. So go here, full load. Go all the way down here and unload. Now, let's just check. Does that accept tyres? Yes, it does accept tyres. Fantastic. Checkmate says, I tire of this open DDD stream. Just kidding. It was a tyre joke. I get it. It, it. it also avoids confusing the word tyre as in I'm tired. I always get confused. Uh, let's clone that train. So we've got a few of them and set them all on their way so there we go you know before the end of the live stream we need to find out how much these tires are going to make us so let's unpause the game we'll have our first train coming into jimster's tires and let's have a look at the cargo payment rates of tires so there's tires you can see that uh, it very quickly starts to drop off, and the rate is pretty, like, steady. Um, how do you get rid of the double engines later? I just, just send them to depot and get rid of them. Uh, at some point, just change all the trains on that line. Let's see how that compares to passengers. Okay, so it only just pays more than passengers. And it's less than mail. So tyres are actually not a great thing to transport. Uh, coal is actually quite low on that list. And uh, food is not far off the same as tyres. And let's just have a closer look at that. Where's goods? Goods is around here. Oh no, do we have goods? I don't think we do have goods, do we? Hmm. Let's have a look at vehicles. So look, vehicles is you know, around the same as that as well. Potash is down there. Okay, so it's it's better than... Let's get this the right way around. Tyres are better than passengers, but not as good as mail. But we should be able to shift lots of them. So we've got a train that just dropped off some stuff down here. We need to probably rename in fact let's just rename this station here um i can't remember what we're bringing in we're bringing carbon black and sulfur aren't we 
So let's call it Jimsters Max. For materials. Jimsters materials. This is the materials input. The rubber's coming in that way as well. Looks like our first train's on its way. The rest are just sat there loading. So we'll keep an eye on that train. Train 221. Um, Nick says, the greatest part, even though we play the GRG version, it still works with all other custom patched versions. I definitely need to have a look at patched OpenTTD. Um, Nick says, um, update 12 made it so much easier to do with multiplayer with actual servers hosting it instead of having to port forward. That's right. It was a good update. And good, uh, you know what? Update 11 was a good update as well. Update 11 was the one that brought it to Steam. So it's going to take a while for this train to make its journey. It is completely full of, full of tyres. It's, it's total cargo is 450 tonnes of tyres. A lot of tyres. Um, I'm not sure what else we need to do, but let's have a look at the stations and just say total waiting cargo and sort by so we've got uh the airport over here is just completely full we'll deal with it in the future this is what one of the problems with airports but apart from that we've got some bus stations here i don't want buses I'm not i only am interested about trains so over here apparently we've got a build up of something at this colliery But I'm not. It's, I'm not seeing really a build up, build up of anything anywhere. There's a little bit of food building up there. Tiny bit of food building up there, and we've got a little bit of limestone building up here. Overall, the network's coping really well. The, the network's doing really good. Not quite sure why that. Oh, I. I was about to say, I'm not quite sure why that window won't get any smaller, but it's because of all the different cargo types available in the station list. Right then. Um, hello from the Netherlands. There's a lot of people coming by from the Netherlands. Here we go. Look, this track is now mended. Uh, well, I say mended. It's, it's uh, what do you call it, where the ground isn't brown. It's fine now. The assembly plant is still there. It says for maximum production, supply all required cargoes at least once every three months. So we need to get all the tires going. So I think what we'll probably do next time is we will get uh, one of the other ones started. We might not be able to get it to the assembly plant, but we'll definitely work towards it. Uh, Fabian says, why do you use such long trains? I use long trains for places where I know there's going to be a lot of stuff to shift. It works out better. You get more throughput. If you had loads and loads of small trains, that's where your junctions start to slow down. You get trains getting in front of each other and all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah. Nick says, to quickly explain what I mean by patch, for those who don't know, people have made their own versions of OpenTTD. So when everyone starts calling patches, it's really a fork of the game. Yes. It is a fork. We're a bit busy around here, but I think it's just because a train broke down. Overall, seems to be moving okay. Cool. Where's that train going? All the way back round the track. It's almost like we need some sort of fail-safe crossover here. I'm not going to do it though. Right, uh, right. Where's our train and how how are things going on our massive line that we've just put in? Where is it? Is it only just coming down here? Yep. No, no, that's not it. There it is. There's our train. There's our first train. So we've got our first trains gone. Our second train has come through. 
Not seen a third. Oh, there's the third and the fourth. So we're actually starting to run low on trains. So let's get another batch going. Because those trains not only have got to get down there, they've got to turn around and come back up again. Fabian says, thanks Master, great content as always. I'm glad you like the content. I started making uh, content to help people play Open TTD. I continue to make content because of the community that built as a result of that. There you go. Maybe I need to put that on my website. Okay, so our first train is not far off now, folks. So here we go. Now is the time to shout out with your prediction of how much you think this train is going to make in income when it arrives there at the plant. We've had a look at the income graphs. We know that this train will make, in theory, more than passengers, but not as much as mail. We know how long it's gone because we've just built the, the the great big line. And we know it's 10 in length. We've got two engines on the front there. It's top speed, I can't remember, but it's going quite nicely, 128 kilometers an hour. Even around that corner, it continues its speed. Remember, a train will not slow down by turning 45 degrees in its train length. It might slow down if it turns 90 within its train length. And here come the guesses. So we've got Brandon saying 100k, Jackamac with 87, DJ coming in at 80. And we've got a 50, a 135 in there from Martin as well. Uh, Sabre Psycho's here. Hey, welcome. We're doing some guessing at the moment. Uh, we've got 64k. It's quite a low guess, I think, and a higher guess of, uh, from Gravity Sucks of 28k. Remember, it's going to go into the depot first, turn around and come straight back out. Party Piggy says 130, and above the line says 94. I'm going to go with 162. That's going to be my guess. Nudge has come in with a 90k. I think I think mine's a little optimistic. It's a long train, it's a long distance, and it's got two engines, so it should move quite quickly. 162 is my guess. Uh, our survey says... 291. You're all wrong. Everybody. Completely and utterly wrong. Brandon wrong, Jackamack wrong, Egg wrong... Cyber, Gil, everybody. Cathode Ray. I mean, I think Cathode Ray Games is probably the closest. No, no, no. Gravity Sucks, I think, was the closest because Gravity Sucks said 128. No, wait, wait, wait. Party Picky said 130. Oh, no. Luby said 150. Oh, no. Hang on a minute. I'm getting the hundreds and two hundreds. Cathode Ray Games said 215, which was way beyond what anybody else had said, and it was still a small amount. Yeah. 215. Cathode Ray Games, congratulations. You win nothing apart from the pride to know that you did fantastic. There we go. Very nice. Very nice indeed. And those tires are being produced at a good rate you can see we've got no tires waiting in the yard here at the moment and we're transporting a good amount of them which is brilliant we've got plenty of trains waiting which is fine because our first train is only just on its way back over over here so we're doing all right the, that's going to help the bank balance having those trains coming quite regularly uh, I do want to make this station look a bit better, though. So let's go to railway construction. And let's see what sort of fixtures we can do here. So these are all the rail... Oh, no, actually, no, wait. The, we've got... These ramp up bits. So if we put ramp up bits in, that that kind of fits onto the station there. That's nice. I guess if we put more ramp up bits in here, that's going to look good for later. Then we've got these fences, which I think might be good to have down the edge. Let's just make that invisible. Yep, there we go. That's quite good. So then I don't know how this is going to work. 
I think if I fill that in with something, it'll be all right. Uh, we've got yards and other bits and bobs. Uh, Nick says, just to name a few, JRG has drive through depots, signal restrictions, uh, and multiplayer infrastructure sharing. Yeah. <laughs> DJX says, I guess people aren't used to guessing with 10 long trains. I, th I think you're right there, eh? I think you're right. I think that is a good part of it. Uh, we could probably have a rampy bit there. And then, I mean... I have no idea what that is, but it looks good. Um, it's like a... Is it a bit like to do with a marshalling yard? Or is it part of the facilities? We can we can certainly put some facilities in here. A couple of buildings. Um, just to pad it out a bit, if nothing else. Um... I think I prefer that for that one. And then what we got down here. We've got anything where we can. What are they? That's paper, timber, barrels, steel. Okay, so that's fine. That's general cargo as well. Okay, I think we're nearly done with like playing around with this t uh, with this station. Um, just not quite sure exactly what I'm going to fill in. Oh, hang on. Fixtures. Is that what I was looking for? Yeah, it probably was, actually. I mean, we could, put, we could pop a crane in, but I don't really want to pop a crane in. Put a crane in at the edge. Oh, no. We've broken the... We'll put a crane in there, and we'll see if we can put the edge in back in. Here we go. Then we've got blank tiles for here. I think that'll do. I don't think we ever want, we don't think we want to overdo it. You know, this fence actually merges quite nicely in with the track fence there. So maybe this piece of fence shouldn't be there. Railway construction. Get rid of that fence. Pop that in there like that too. That's the wrong thing because then we've blocked off that fence. There we go. That's good. Jobs are good. I like that. Nice little yard. Bits and bobs. Ramp going up. And we could do some stuff on the other side, but I can't be bothered. <laughs> um, Brandon says, or anything that long route with that value. Brandon says, I just feel like infrastructure sharing just leaves more clogging. There is, I'm pretty sure, there's a mod for uh, Vanilla Open TTD, which, like non patched, which allows for infra infrastructure sharing. So we'll probably maybe have a look at that. <laughs> Nick's running 64 tile trains. Yeah, 64 tiles. That's crazy. It's the first, the first train's about to come back. So one would say that we've actually got too many trains at the moment, but hopefully production will increase here. Like the more we transport out, the more the production will go up. And we are supplying three out of the four cargo types. So we definitely need to look at doing that next. Uh, one of the things we're not doing yet is actually getting any cars out. Maybe we need to do that. Maybe we need to look at whether, whether we can get cars out of there. So, we'll see. But I'm quite happy with this layout. This layout, this station, the way it comes in. I think we've got plenty to handle that there. And the trains are coming backwards and forwards quite nicely. It must be servicing okay, but we'll see how it goes in the future. We can see more platforms are getting used up here now as well. Whoa! Mouse cursor, steady. So, steel wire rods, eh? Where are we going to get them from? Let's find out. So if we go to industry chains, 
and we select steel wire rod that we can see they come from a wire and section mill and a wire and section mill needs carbon steel acid and or cleaning agents and those things come from a wharf a basic oxygen furnace an electric arc furnace or whatever that is a color a kalak no idea whatever that is now the wharf needs things that go this is this is a complicated complex one i feel like we need the website for this i'm going to get the website to figure this one out let's have a look um Furs industry replacement sets. Is that the right version? Yeah, I think I found it. <laughs> Once again, Brandon jumps in with the with the link, but I've I've got it this time. Thank you anyway. So this is. Let me just get it on screen. This is Steel Town, the cargo flow for Steel Town. And as you can see on the right hand side here, we've got the assembly plant. Shall we, let's see if we can do a capture on this so I can draw on it. There we go. So here is the assembly plant that we are feeding stuff into. We've currently only done tires and that's coming from the tire plant which we've pretty much sorted. Now, we have already done the carbon black uh, coming from the coke oven with all the coal mine and stuff. That's all done. That's Krillo's coke. And that is bringing the coal tar and sulfur in. So the coal tar is getting into carbon black and then that's going into our tyre plant and the sulfur is being done. Uh, I think it was last live stream we sorted the rubber out from a bulk terminal. And the bulk terminal we fed with food from farms. We did. So we got farms into a bulk terminal and that sorted out the rubber. So now, now we're looking at the steel wire rod. This is going to be the, the difficult one, I think. So to get the steel wire rod... We need a wire and sectioning mill. Okay, that's the one we need. But we need to feed the wire and sectioning mill with either um, carbon steel or acid. So the wire and section mill is one step back. Carbon steel comes from a basic oxygen furnace. That would be two steps back. And the acid comes from that thing that I don't know how to pronounce. That is a two step back as well. Okay. Color alkali. Not sure about that one. Not sure about that one. Um... The basic oxygen furnace requires either oxygen, quicklime, or manganese. Now the good news is, is that we can get manganese from the bulk terminal. So we can go direct, so we've already got stuff coming out the bulk terminal this way. We could actually also then take the manganese out the bulk terminal the other way into the basic oxygen furnace and then wire and section mill to bring it into the tire plant. Um, but the quick lime would need to come from a lime kiln, which would be a number three industry, and then that would need to come uh, get the limestone from the qu quarry. That would be the fourth industry down the chain. Whereas the, the, the this plant is a number two, we just need salt. So that comes from a soda ash mine or a potash mine which are both number threes. So, 
we either go potash soda ash to the plant, plant to the wire and section mill, or lime kiln from a limestone mine then to the... There's an extra one. There's an extra step there, there. It's, it's all relatively complicated. So, I think... Probably... We've got two options. Let's clear this middle section up. We've got two options. And I'm going to let chat decide which option we go for. Okay. And I'll, can I get my thick pen out, please? Custom thick. So we either come the carbon steel route through the oxygen furnace with manganese from our bulk terminal. That is option one. Or we come the acid route from this plant and then probably from either the potash and soda ash mines. Probably both. That is option number two. Okay. Now bear in mind we already have a relatively good bulk terminal up and running. So we'd only need to do a few stations. Uh, so that is kind of like the half of it's done already route. Um, but we'd still have to do some stuff. So let's have a look. Um, <laughs> you you want me to do the plant because I can't spell it. I can't I can't even say it. Let alone spell it. Charles is saying number two. Zio says number two. Sorry, I, I, we need to double check the pronunciation of your name, Zio. Is that right? Please tell me. I know. I think we've asked before, but I'm sorry, I forgot. I think the obvious solution is option number three. Yeah, option number three is is that we go and play Minecraft instead. <laughs> Brandon says two. Zio's okay. Okay. Um, okay. Wow. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six people saying option two seven people saying option two eight people saying option two and one person saying option one and dgx says play minecraft <laughs> okay we're gonna go with option two we're gonna go with option two so let's clean this up a second and just quickly highlight exactly what we want we want steel wire rods at our tyre plant. To get that, we need um, them from a wire and section mill. We're going to fill that with as much acid as possible from whatever plant that is. And we're going to use salt from either of these two industries, depending on what's available. And I don't want to cover the name up. That's a quarry and a potash mine. So there we go. Yeah, there's, there's, there's so there's so many. And we've got one more vote for option one, but it's it's been so outvoted. So let's let's go back to open TTD and actually get that ready now. Looking at the time, I don't know whether we'll have time, but we'll see. Is the soda not the quarry? Tasty soda. Uh, there's a potash mine and there's a generic quarry as well. Oh no, hang on a minute. You're right. It's it's the soda ash mine, not the quarry, because the quarry does limestone. Thank you. Yes, you're right. Sorry, Charles. <laughs> I uh, Yeah, you're right there. So we can... We can fund the wire and section mill and the plant anywhere we like. I think what we should do is within this area of the map, because bearing in mind the station that we want to put in is somewhere around here. So we could have 
like the station to accept the steel rods here, then maybe we could have like the Wyon section mill there. And then we just pick out all the stuff that we need from around here from the potash mine and the soda ash mines. So the question now is, where are they all? So this is... This is the part of the world we want to be looking at. And let's just disable all of them and just turn on uh, soda ash mines, which I've lost. There they are. There's 101 of them, and there's only a few in the local area. One down here on the coast, one over here, I think that's in the hills, and one actually over by our tyre plant. So I don't know whether that's a good idea or not for us to get that. And the other one is the potash mine. Again, there's not that many. Again, there's one over here by our tyre plant. Uh, there's one on the coast there. And there's something here or there as well, a potash mine. Uh, okay, I'm not sure. More distance, says Brandon. I'm not so sure. Uh, Tylenbus says, I rediscovered OpenTTD some days ago after almost a decade. Yeah, Furs is like the big one. It really is. Okay. Well, looking at it, actually, I was aiming for over here. There's not a lot there. Look at this area, right? In this landmass, there is one, two, three, four soda ash mines. And there is one, two, three, four potash mines. Let's have a look at the topography. Oh, it's relatively flat as well. Okay, so we can do that. We can put... I mean, I'd like to be able to see both at the same time here, but it's not going to happen. We can put one of the... Um, places that we're going to do. The, the plant. We can put the plant here. Then we can come down here and put in the actual wire and section mill if there isn't one already there let's let's have a look to see if there's any nearby just by pure coincidence that we could use so wire and section mill uh oh we're in the wrong bit of the world map uh no there's no wire and section mill anywhere near there and the plants uh, there's actually one relatively close to the tyre productions, but it's in the wrong end. You know what? Actually here, this plant here is in a good position. It's right between all of those other things that we want to look at. Is that it? Yeah, there it is. And apart from a river, that's in a good place. What do we think, chat? Grab both, take away and bring back the goods. Could do. Bi-directional systems are a, a good system. So uh, this is the plant. Oh, there we go. The plant. And we need to get it over here without too much problem. I think what we'll probably do is just cut across this lake and put our station in there because... Why not? <laughs> uh, we'll put the wire and section mill over here. Look at that. It's a vehicle distributor. So let's do uh, fund new industry, wire and section mill here. And then we can do uh, well, I'm just going to put wire mill. There we go. So we've got the wire mill there. So then what we'll do is we'll have like the in here and then the out on this side. Outer. <laughs> and then that will go across the water 
and we'll bring in the steel wire rod drop off. Steel wire rod in. We'll go there. It'll come across the water. We could do it with boats. I'm not going to. Un underwater tunnel. You can't do an underwater tunnel in, in uh, base open TTD. So unfortunately you can't. And then the plant. So the plant is going to the wire mill. The wire mill is going to come around here and drop off there. Why so keen to cross the water? Just because it's a more direct route. It's like going round the water all the way around this edge. It you, distances in open TTD are measured in Manhattan distances, so basically non-diagonal. So you go along and across. And if you're going all the way round, you're going further, which means you're going to get less money. Uh, the other option would be to try and come round this way, in which case we've got already a lot of track and a lot of stations. So we can't go under the water. Going round the water is less efficient, and we've got plenty of money to just go across the water. So it's not a matter of that I'm keen to cross the water, it's just I can. And there's nothing in the way across the water. Like, there's no towns in the way, there's no industries in the way, it's a more direct route. Put the wire plant more to the west. Like, over here. I mean, I could do... But then again, you've got all these towns and industries for me to have to, like, get around with the railway lines that we're going to put in. Where here, I can just go straight across. Jobs are good. I don't think I'll even do 10 length trains here. I think we'll use 6 length trains for this bit. Because it's a relatively short distance. And this one too, it's not a massive distance. 6 length trains for this whole network. So, let's just quickly mark out the nearby things that we're going to do. So... There is one of the potash mines. So that is the first thing we're going to connect up. Then over here, we have, I think, what was the soda ash mine? And there's another potash mine there. And that's like the first, like the closest three. And then if we want to go out any further, we can. Let's check the industry and see what it needs. Okay, so according to this, production doesn't change depending on like a variety of different inputs. It just requires salt. It's only one input. So we just throw as much salt in it at, at it as possible. And then the wire mill, it says for maximum product pro uh, production rate, supply all three required cargoes uh, at least once every three months. So ideally, we need a little bit of carbon steel and a little bit of cleaning agent. And we get cleaning agent only from a wharf. Uh, what's that? That's a wharf. And it and it provides cleaning agent. So we can actually bring cleaning agent over to this mill. Um, like over here. So we can bring a bit of that from the wharf. So we need to make a note of that. I don't think I typed it properly, but that doesn't matter. Uh, so we get cleaning agent. Yeah, I definitely mistyped that. So uh, cleaning agent will come across over to the wire mill. And then we need some... Carbon steel? which we can do by putting uh, the manganese into a basic oxygen furnace from our bulk terminal, which is all the way up here. So we could potentially have another little line that comes down here and just brings it over. It's a long one, that, so we'll see. Martin says, this steel town economy looks very complex. 
you really have to practice a lot before joining multiplayer games. I mean, I mean, it's not difficult. It's like one industry requires things and produces others. The basic concept is very simple. But um, there's just like a lot of links. So that's where it does, yes, it does get complex. It's not difficult, it's complex. And to me, that's different. Um, what about ships? I'm, I'm not going to use ships to transport that. I mean, I've tried ships in so many different ways and I'm just, I'm not just down, I'm not down with it. I'm sorry. It's not going to happen. Um, what we're going to have to do then, we're going to have to get manganese from here. And what I would propose is like somewhere on the coast here, we get the basic oxygen furnace. Is there actually a basic oxygen furnace already around here somewhere? Let's have a look. So map of the world, spend it out. Basic oxygen furnace is the one round here. Nope, there's not one. There's not one for miles away. So we'll put one in here. Uh, the railway line there. Yeah, we'll, we'll pop it here. So industry, fund new industry, basic oxygen furnace, fund there. So that's where the basic oxygen furnace is going to go. We only need a little bit from here to be able to give a boost to the production of the wire and section mill. We, we don't need that to be the driver. We just need a boost. So when you've got something that says, oh, you need to get, pro provide all three, um, it doesn't matter if you provide two a little bit and one a lot. That's The two a little bit gets you your boost and then the one a lot is what help drives it up. So... We've got to get that all the way across there. So let's then mark that one. And this is uh, this is the basic oxygen furnace for the manganese in. So this this is producing our uh, making the carbon steel. I think I typed that one right. Yeah, it, yeah, it's just more and quite. It's more interconnected as well, Brandon. So, in in basic open TTD, you've got a very linear progression of goods. So, you know, uh, farms. Uh, bad example. Iron ore goes to steel mill. Steel mill goes to factory. Factory goes to towns. Linear progression. In furs, there's some things that go backwards. So, like cleaning agents go back a, a level where other things come forward into it and you've got loops of bits that like like potash mines can go to two different places and uh, you've got one thing that makes multiple different things that split off and go different ways there's not a massive amount of loop backs you've got zinc that comes back from a wharf um I'm not really sure what else. You know, something I did forget, though, is some down here, uh, ALM's blasting, we are producing something, and we're not using it. So we are producing pig iron, cast iron, and slag, and we're not using any of that at the minute. But we will do for making our engine plant. So next time... We will connect up all the things that we've planned this time. So we'll get all of this stuff, creating carbon steel, bringing it over to our wire mill with our cleaning agent. We'll connect that up to the plant over here and all of these uh, salt generators and then get that brought into the uh, into Jimster's um, tyre production and that will then boost the tyre production. We'll get a nice boost there and we'll transport it all out. Uh, and then the time after that, we're going to make the vehicle engines to go into the assembly plant. So the assembly plant needs vehicle engines. And we actually have half the stuff we need for that made already. So we're already producing cast iron over here. Okay, we're already producing cast iron. The other thing that you need for that is sand. And you can get that directly from a quarry. 
and you also need aluminium. The problem is, is aluminium comes from a bulk terminal, so I'm not sure whether we're going to just try and get it to come from like this bulk terminal. We'll like maybe use road vehicles or a spread station to pick up aluminium. We'll pick up the cast iron and we'll bring it over to maybe somewhere over here where we'll build an engine plant and then just we'll find on the world map around this point where all the sand is. So let's uh, disable all and show sand. No wait, sand comes from a quarry. Where's all the quarries? So there we are. There are there are quarries around here. In fact, there are four or five around where I'm thinking about putting the engine plant. So just pumping that engine plant with sand and the cast iron that we're already making with a little bit of uh, aluminium from the bulk terminal should do the job. I think we're looking good. Uh, can you share tracks when you play this on multiplayer? No, but I believe there is a mod for that. Um... <laughs> you know what, uh, Tonimbus, I've never thought of that. All this effort to build cars, and they're the worst enemy of railways. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, folks. Um, how long have we been going for on the stream? Let's have a look. According to this, we've been going for about two hours. Um, and I think we've done well. We, we've done the big awkward line i was worried about this one because the amount of water that was between just made it difficult for putting the the depots in and things but managed to do that really quite nicely and i'm really happy with this station here at the moment so let's get we'll do tires part four or whatever it is maybe we can call it wire mill because it's all coming from the wire mill isn't it what are we creating steel wire rod so there you go the episode the ep uh, next live stream will probably be called steel steel wire rods or something like that and we'll get all of that hooked up we'll do some speed building we'll get loads of stuff loads of track loads of stations built in next time and then the time after that we might actually get the engine plant finished as well and we will be halfway through getting all of the requirements for the assembly plant which I think is really good going. So I know we've only built one line today, uh, but it's been a big one. It's been a long one. It's been an important one to get right. And also we've done so much planning to know exactly what we're going to do over the next few live streams, which is brilliant. Um, so uh, I'm going to start wrapping it up there. Sometimes I do the stream a little bit longer than this, but um, it's been it's been a busy few days. So I'm going to I'm going to head off to bed and uh next week on monday from i think half past eight at night utc is when you can expect the live stream so i hope you all enjoyed the stream it was jack mac says it's a good stream thanks jack mac i hope you enjoyed it and i hope the quality of the uh of the stuff is better um do you use any other mods to make MTTD more realistic. I mean, there are some out there. We've tried a few, but there's not a massive amount. Um, but I think it's good. I think it's a it's a good setup. And what we got coming up over the next couple of days? Let's have a quick look at that just to make sure we know what's going on. So tomorrow we don't have a live stream or video. I'm not able to do my normal stream. Normally we'd be doing Transport Fever. I'm not able to do that. However. Me and the viewer plus subscribers, no, no, not the viewer plus subscribers. Me and the uh, the corporation are going to be doing a, a an event on Eve Online. Uh, if you want to come and join us, uh, Eve Online Eve Online is free to try. And you go to my website masterhalish.net, and there is a web page. Uh, there is a page on the site that tells you how to get involved with that. So, no live stream or video tomorrow. But I am doing a game giveaway tomorrow. It is the January game giveaway. So. Uh, look out for the announcements of that on social media and on Discord. And then Wednesday, lunchtime, we've got Gaming with the Viewer Plus subscribers. I think we're going to do the Ender Dragon fight then. 
Uh, Thursday night, we've got my first railway line in Minecraft on the new Minecraft server. Not my first railway line ever. The first railway line of my transport series, which is going to be good fun to do. I think we're going to set up DJ Egg's nether tunnel. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Friday lunchtime, we've got RimWorld. So a little bit of sad news. We haven't got transport fever this, this week. But we've got loads of good stuff coming up. And we've got a YouTube video on Saturday, Open TTD. The episode title is Financial Trouble. That's my Series 6 Let's Play. I hope you enjoy that. I hope you've enjoyed this. Take care, everybody. And I'll see you over the next few days. Uh, goodbye. Take care. Ta-ra.